welcome to this week's episode of More or Nothing. And this week, well, we're your favourite Fijian podcast anyway. And we have got two of the boys here with us. Bula, bula, bula. Hello, boys. <laughs> Steve O'Ravitamala and Simi Kurulodi. <laughs> Did I nail that? Did you do it? Salama. 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 Max's turn, go. Estino Rabatumadu, Rabataumada, Rabatumada, correct. Simi Kuruvoli. Kuruvoli. Our in house Fiji. Rabatumada Kuruvoli. Kere kere, manga chinana. Bulevanaka Sayandra Nalangu Ryan Wilson. How good, eh, boys? I'm, this is it. I'm fucking. I'm home. I'm back home. I know we're in Car. I know we're in Cardiff, but I'm home. Good drive, on it? Like I feel like I'm going this way. Oh, you're, man. you're, yeah. Oh, fuck you. you That's it. Look boys. how quickly he drops us. I know. As soon nah. as the Fijian boys are here, we're just nothing to you. Yeah. Your side girls. I just, yeah, I just feel happy to have them. What's Fiji been like since, since the World Cup? Because you should have beaten England. Yeah, hundred. Like you should have beaten England. <laughs> But to, to go as well as you did, like everyone, obviously Portugal, I've, I've labelled it as you boys being Fijian, like just being nice and saying, okay, we'll, we'll let you have the win, but we're still going to go through. Like that's just the Fijian way. And I love that from you boys. But <laughs> boys, you should have, you should have been in the semis, though. Yeah. What was Fiji like? Talk to me when you got back. Right, we got off the airport before we won gold for Fiji. Really? Wow. Was it mad? Yeah, it was it was mad. It it <laughs> like, oh, from sick. the kids to the oldies. But that's beautiful. That's what you want, eh? That's like no matter what, like you've made Fiji proud, eh? Yeah. Class. Imagine if you did win the World Cup. Oh. Kings forever. Kings yeah. forever. <laughs> There's the goal. Prime Minister will be like, like will be, yeah. Yeah. get them on each cars. <laughs> That's what they want, a free car. <laughs> Guys just get a lease car. Because well, yeah. it was similar when then the boys won the first ever Olympic gold. So the seven dollar Fijian yeah, note, eh? Yeah. Do you know some of the boys that are involved in that? Yeah. Like they're treated like kings now, eh? Mm. But not now. Not yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the new kings. Describe to us what that World Cup campaign meant to people back home in Fiji. It was special, man. You know, during our test match, everyone kind of... Doubted us. Huh? Yeah. Everyone doubted their team. Like they, they said on the Facebook, uh, this team won't, won't reach the... Won't even reach yeah, the quarters. Won't even reach the quarters. And then that, that word motivates us to, you know, to play hard and, and yeah, we play hard for our families. How, like, it... But genuinely, like when you go back, like how important is it for like for Fiji to see the Fijian, the flying Fijian, do well? Like it's so important back for your back for all your little towns and all your little villages back in Fiji. It's important, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we made history on the way, uh, beating England first, and the Aussies in the no offense to my Aussie brothers here. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's rugby in Fiji is huge. Uh, beating those tier one nations. And, uh, to us. and you beat the English first yeah, time in 69 English. years. Yeah. And then obviously beating Australia. Talk to us about Australia. It was massive, bro. Just thinking about all the people that were watching, getting up early. Three o'clock in the morning. Missing, missing work, uh, missing school. Missing school. The people in the village lifting up the generator to look for a good connection just to watch us. Yeah, how good is that, eh? And the players having pride in wearing the white jersey. We'll go through a couple of the experiences in the World Cup, but we called it the most classically Fijian performance of all time, where against Portugal, you made the world happy by qualifying, but also letting Portugal get their first ever win at a World Cup. How did it feel for you guys? What did Big Simon say after that? First up, we thought we didn't qualify. Oh, really? So you came in and thought you'd fucked yeah. it? After the final whistle, we were, I, was, I was in the state and I didn't play. I was crying. <laughs> oh, oh shit! Well, we had no idea. Until um, we someone came back into the dungeon and, and said that uh, yeah, we qualified for the forget, forget about the loss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was it, like, woo! Just lost against Portugal, but then celebrating. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Do you reckon he, if that was, was that a tactic? He didn't tell, because I'm guessing you boys hadn't really looked into it. You just thought, we need to win. 
and we need to win by we just need to win the game because the, the goal for that week was just to win yeah and like, like uh, get confidence for the quarters and obviously we lost yeah the rest was history <laughs> oh damn see we, we saw it as you just boys just being nice, Fiji yeah like, boys yeah. we'll do just enough <laughs> so everybody's you just, yeah see the Portuguese boys like meeting Ronaldo and oh, they yeah. lost that was all that was all you boys yeah that was all you they would have yeah. met Ronaldo. He Ronaldo, Ronaldo came, came and, and, and yeah, yeah, to come and meet them and everything. They came back. They came back to Portugal, and the the airport King. is like absolutely banging because they got this win yeah. thanks to you guys. Yeah, it's so kind. You're Fijians. welcome. They're just Portuguese people. Yeah, there you are. There you have it. You are welcome. There you go. <laughs> um, what's been the main difference from your perspective? I mean, you, you're both young guys, but from what you've heard from those who've been at previous World Cups, why was this one? Different. Why was this Fijian side so much more prepared? It felt like than than previous World Cup. I think it, it started uh, from from day one. We went to the village in February. No one, no one knows you know each other really well until we get into the camp. And that's what Simon was has has said. He's like he wanted people to remember why you do what you do yeah. and why you were back. You know, home in in and in the villages and going up together and singing and you know all that wonderful footage that came out. But is that how you felt as well? Yeah, it got us like really tight as a group, like knowing where we come from, uh, especially seeing the people in the village, what they do, and what uh, they do, like early in the mornings or late at night to watch the games. And we like, oh yeah, it gave us a a feeling on, especially because. <coughs> uh, uh, every time the like the call, we get a call like for national duty. We just go to the hotel, stay in the room on our phones. Yeah. Not, no, no talk, no nothing. Right. Just next day, meet in the meeting room, train, come back. Uh, but the first day in Tavuni was whole different. Like, there was no, uh, no players, internet. players everywhere, no sleeping, internet. sleeping, sleeping, yeah, sleeping, sleeping next sleeping to each other, like on the, yeah. on on the, the floor, on the yeah. floor, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, that's yeah, so but, sick. but that's like when you were kids, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what you do as kids. I remember going to Leonie Nakarawa's family's house, and all the kids were just slept, sleeping on the floor. That's close. So taking you back to like the days when that's what yeah. it was like, eh? Like the days of how we started playing. Right yeah. yeah. How special is that? That is so good. Yeah, it was so good, uh, especially like experiencing that. Uh, un unless um, till we are on a professional level now, and yeah. you get to experience what what we came through. Don't change. Don't change. <laughs> yeah. Don't change. Yeah. 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 Always yeah. remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Like experience what you came from. Exactly. So good. Especially when you've got like that view, oh, of hindsight. Man. Now that you're like both season pros. They were probably my most so favourite bits of like footage that came out when you boys were building up to the up World the Cup. Up the hill, the June. Up the hill. Oh, you know, up the hill when you all give it the walk up the hill. But even like in and amongst all the villages, like all you boys. I'm pretty sure I saw Penny Matawalu in with the in with the mum and like in the army. This was up in the dunes, sun's hot, and he's been uh, on his binny. <laughs> wearing his binny. <laughs> how long? How long was it? How long were you guys there for? In Tavini? Yeah. It was just uh, one week. Two, uh, one week. One week. Yeah. That's quite a long. That's quite a long time. Yeah. It used to be like sleeping on the floor mm, yeah. and all of that. Steve, you know, let's uh, start with you. What was your the single best moment of the World Cup for you? When we when we sing a, a hymn song, uh, yeah, we we had this uh, theme song that we sing when we win or any any time of the day, and it's so special that, that song. That's your favourite bit. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you know what was the song? Give it to us, boys. Can you get it? Okay. Taratunambula ni no nanda uvasota. Borayimbekali Budini kila ma bude yena wakamata. Beautiful, boys, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> this is it. This is it. Though. It's just like heart and soul. It is, yeah. and it's and it's and it's so oh. harmonious. And it's like if it was sort of English people, it'd, it'd be fifty-four beers. <laughs> 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 
Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, shut I don't argue. <laughs> Old flower has gone. Over, the over the years, you know, you look at every single international side, there's a, there's a brilliant Fijian in it. Yeah. And, you know, losing a lot of Fijians to other countries, do you think Fijian Drua now means that the younger kids will want to play for Fiji and then also continue playing for Fiji and you won't lose as many athletes and players. Yes. Now, like before, when we, like, when the Fiji team come, comes together, like, we go back to the basics, just like before. Uh, not like now, uh, professional, we have a Fiji draw, professional environment. Like, when the, the overseas boys come and meet us, like, like, we're on the same level. Give a quick word on, on Samurai Rabadui. No, yeah, he's a, he's a good man. The way he approaches players, so professional. Uh, yeah, he's a good man. He like, says stuff in a way that we, we learn. Like we learn from, instead of just like barking at us. Yeah, and, like Vern. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Vern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a top man. How important was it that he understood, as you were all saying, he knew how to talk to you and you've had a succession of foreign coaches who, who, who'd been before, and suddenly you've got somebody, you know, who, who knows the exact words and understands what it means to be, to be Fijian and to, and, to, and to represent your country. He, he once was a player, and he's a Fijian, so everything that goes around the, the group, he once has gone, got through that too. So everything he says or acts, uh, he knows what, what's going on in the squad. So, yeah. Let's get Sir Evie involved. When I turned yeah. up to the Fijian hotel, yeah. he gave you the old like that, and oh, sanga, sanga. And I had to go and sit with the elders at the front, <laughs> and they gave me the grog, but yeah. it was very thick. Who was this? After the Fiji England game. No, you boys were out on the piss. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sir you came Evie. after we left it. Sanga, I was there, and you boys mm. were out till six in the morning. <laughs> at six o'clock in the morning, I went, I was like, fuck. And everyone says, no, the grog, you know, it chills you out, it makes you feel tired. No, it's six o'clock in the fucking morning. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna fall asleep. <laughs> I'm like, hey, hey, the grog is making you sleepy. No, it's fucking six in the morning. He's like, come on, baby, stay. And I'm like, Nick, I'm going back to the ship. And okay, I'm gonna stay. And I, I was just like, fuck, you know, yeah, you have too much grog. No, no it's fucking six. look at the time. It's six o'clock in the morning. That's I'll do that to you. We've got some quick fire questions. You ready? Happy to go with these. Mm. Best teammate you've ever had. Best teammate you've ever had. Mine would be Ben. Ben Matol. <laughs> Nick's his brother. <laughs> Masi. Oh, you no. say for Masi? They're from the same village. Him? Keep... Shit. <laughs> Someone you wish you had been teammates with from another team that you could have been teammates with. Aaron Smith. Aaron Smith. Oh, good one. <laughs> Legendary. Severus. Severus. Yeah. Yeah, good boy, eh? He's a good boy. With, well, George Bauer. And, yeah, they live together. We had George Bauer on. Hey, George Bauer, what a lovely bloke, eh? <laughs> Legend. Man, eh? Favourite World Cup moment? Mine will be Brothers. beating Australia. Beating Australia? Yeah. Making my debut for the World Cup. <laughs> nice. Congrats. Worst World Cup moment? Losing to England in the quarters. That's fair and then enough. looking up and seeing James Haskell with his top on. <laughs> <laughs> Get down from there, man. Losing to Portugal. Losing yeah. Portugal. There was the game that we could have won. And you also thought you had been knocked out the World yeah. Cup. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty big. <laughs> that's <laughs> massive. Yeah. Who's leading the charge on the social side at Barbados? I'd say Penny, Ravai. That guy can drink, man. Penny. Yeah. Mine would be the skipper. Alvin Jones? Yeah. Alvin right. Jones. Has he been going for it, is he? He goes hard on the beers. Man. Because he gets you free beers as well, though. Yeah. King of Wales. Wales. Describe yeah. going out in Wales with Alan Wynne Jones when you walk into yeah. a bar and they don't know that Alan Wynne Jones has just walked in yeah, and then suddenly they see it. What's it like? We tuck our wallets back in our pockets. In your brown paper bag back yeah. in the, back yeah. of the envelope. envelope. God. And he'll be like, he was saying this to the bartenders. Um, if you could pick one other sport to play, any other sport, what would it be? Uh, American football. Yeah, yeah. I'll just, it's just a kicker. I just go in and kick a <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> and earn <and> 12 million. <laughs> uh, basketball. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then last thing, starting this end. One thing you could not live without. 
And you can't say family. My phone. Your phone? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> 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 Rugby right, ball? Yeah. Yeah. No, you boys get away. I've seen, like, Nico used to tell me it doesn't matter, you don't need a rugby ball. It's just yeah. bottle, like, a bottle, coconut, or a coconut, anything. Just tie your t shirt. For you? What could you not live without? Probably money. <laughs> Sadly, that is all the time we've got left uh, for this week. A very special Fijian podcast, as we always are, but with some of the legends uh, as always thank you to ryan uh, and to max but also huge thanks simi uh, and stino and yeah the future of fijian rugby is bright more or nothing